When we think of hurricanes, the first thing that comes to mind is the category, which is a scale based solely on wind. But as we've seen time and time again, especially with storms like Hurricane Celine and Milton, the danger goes far beyond that. Storm surge, flooding rain, tornadoes, all of which can cause just as much, if not more, damage. And those threats aren't fully captured in our current hurricane scale. That's why there's growing interest in a new approach. Yeah, today in this morning on Weather Command, we are joined by Jennifer Collins, a professor at the University of South Florida, uh, whose research focuses on this very issue and, and Jennifer and her team working on a new hurricane scale that accounts for some of these factors. And um, Professor, we are excited to have you because this is quite the discussion, specifically so in the meteorological community, mm -hmm. because the truth is people cling very tightly to that category, especially when it comes for that decision to evacuate. Let's start with what your research has found in those key differences between your proposed hurricane scale and then the current Saffir Simpson wind scale that we have in place. Yeah, thank you, Jane Mercer. Uh, absolutely. So as you said, a lot of people do cling on to what is the category. And my research has actually shown that people often are basing their evacuation decision on that category. Uh, often, if it's a tropical storm strength or a Cat 1, for instance, they might make the decision not to evacuate, whereas people have reported to me if they hear it's a major hurricane, which is a Category 3 or above, then they might consider evacuating. So the Sapphire Simpson hurricane wind scale is simply that. It's a wind scale. So it's only looking at the wind. However, the tropical cyclone severity scale, which was developed from a team in, led from the team in the Netherlands and, and myself, that considers multiple hazards, not just that wind, but considering other hazards that we've seen, we've the storm surge, the rainfall. So it considers those three hazards and it provides a category for each of those hazards. So each one will have its individual category. It could be a cat three, cat four, cat one for each of them. And then it also comes up with a combined score. And it also allows for the fact that we might actually see a category six on our scale. And that can happen when, if you have two category fives, like for wind or surge, you have a category five for each. If you've got two of at least category five, we, we're gonna call it category six on our scale. So I think the important point is that our scale takes into account multiple hazards in the communication. And you can have a category for each of those hazards plus a combined, uh, combined uh, category. Jennifer, communication, it's one of the biggest challenges that we face, ironically, as communicators. But how people perceive information is a very important social science. So when you're taking what has been so adopted by the public of this single category and now introducing three more plus a combined scale, you know, how does your research show the public has responded to that? I know you have put out some surveys is there a positive response to this? Are people understanding it? So, so far our results have been from focus groups with my PhD student leading that. And the focus group results have been very encouraging. People do want some scale to consider multiple hazards. And, you know, what the National Hurricane Center already does is they do have uh, very clear graphics describing the storm surge forecast, rainfall forecast. So those products are out there. But like I said, my research really shows that people do cling on to what the category is. So people do seem to kind of like the idea of a category and they're certainly used to that idea. Um, so generally our focus groups have shown people would kind of rather have no scale than the existing one, which mm. isn't taking into account a lot of the effects. Um, but there was quite a lot of positives to our scale. Um, but, you know, one of the important points to make is, like, you take a system like Hurricane Debbie that occurred earlier this year in August, which, as you showed earlier in your show, kind of hit that big bend area, but it hit it as a very slow-moving Category 1. 
on the Saffir Simpson hurricane wind scale. But the amount of flooding that we saw from that was not at all equivalent to what people would think of in their heads that they should expect from a category one. And that's because, again, that scale only considers wind. Whereas on our scale, that would have put that system at a category four. And if people hear a major hurricane, they're going to make different decisions, mm -hmm. many of them, yeah. in their evacuation decisions. And, and Jennifer, I'm sorry, just because we're up against the time clock here, I thought it was interesting. Um, real quickly, you talked about Helene and some of your research saying that even if you just isolated um, western North Carolina with the amount of rain that it had, it would have put it in a Category 3 for that region. Now, Helene made landfall as a Category 4, a major hurricane and maintained Cat 2 strength and Cat 1 strength as it headed up out of Georgia and into North Carolina. So I think, yeah, I mean, if you think about it, that would raise the alarm for places like North Carolina. Well, actually, yes, actually for Helene, for the Western North Carolina region with the rainfall and all that even flooding, actually on our mm -hmm. scale for that area, it would have put it as a Cat 5. Oh, now I see it, So yeah, yeah that would have raised alarms. And I think yeah. that's the, the point that we need people to consider these multiple hazards and the alarms being raised appropriately. Well, I think that's an interesting thing because we had a high risk of flooding introduced that day with mm -hmm. just a straight flood watch. So yeah. there is a lot of challenges that come with this. And I think you guys, you and your team are on the right path. You know, mm -hmm. we have to address these communication challenges so that people can really understand the impact of what these storms are bringing. Thank you. And as you said, we have surveys coming out shortly to the public, and we will be gaining further insight into this. Well, we certainly appreciate it, and I know they do, too. Um, thank you thank very you. much, University of South Florida professor of geosciences Jennifer Collins joining us. And just to note, this is um, private research. This has nothing to do with the National Hurricane Center actually changing anything right. to the Saffir Simpson scale in place. Um,